Hi, my name is Heather and welcome to another episode of Cover to Cover Canva Edition, my series where I share my process with you creating a children's book using Canva elements. I'll include my copyright reminder here. And remember, this isn't a tutorial, it's just me sharing my process with you. So if you'd like more step-by-step -step instructions, check out the videos that I'll link in the description. I have the book pulled up here and we're gonna do the next two pages. So the first one says, as Titan neared his cozy bed, something caught his eye and nestled in a pile of fluffy blankets was the missing squeaky monkey. And then the next page says, woof, woof, I found it. He barked. He grabbed the monkey in his mouth and the familiar squeak echoed in the room, making Titan's tail wag. This definitely looks like it's two different scenes because the first one is just Titan seeing the squeaky monkey in the dog bed. And then the next one is where he found it and he has the monkey in his mouth. So we will do two separate scenes for this one. We can have where one of them is in like a bubble and then the other one can be a full page. That way we don't have two full scenes next to each other because that can be kind of confusing because it kind of looks like a spread, but it's not a spread. I'm not sure exactly which one I want in the bubble yet. So I'll just build the scenes and then we can decide later which one to put in the bubble. Probably whichever one is the simpler one in the end. For this one, we're definitely going to need the dog bed and some blankets and the monkey. So let's search for a dog bed. And from the illustrations that we already have, his dog bed is blue, as we have right here. And I don't think we have the dog bed separately by itself. So we can just use the same colors in a dog bed and that'll probably be fine. Let's copy this and we'll paste it down here so that way we can copy the colors. This one looks pretty similar. And we can edit the colors right here. One other small detail here is that his dog bed has these paw prints on it. So I think I do just want to add some little paw prints there. I'm not really finding any that look similar enough because if you look at these, these paw prints are very round and the ones I'm finding are kind of too realistic because they actually have the shape of the paw print. So actually, I bet I could just grab this and use it down there. If I just crop tighten out. That's probably good enough because we're also gonna have a blanket on here. So let's search for blankets. I like that because it really looks like it's going over the edge there. This might be cute too. And we can change the colors maybe to go a little bit better. And then we're going to have the squeaky monkey nestled in the pile of the fluffy blankets. So I'm going to go grab the monkey. Move him underneath. And we can have him just peeking out a little bit. I'm going to grab all of this and group it so that I have everything placed properly. And because he's walking through the living room and then he ends up seeing the dog bed, I'm going to assume that the dog bed is in the living room. So let's just take this living room and use that as the background. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the image of the living room and copy. And then I'm going to come down here and paste. But obviously we're not going to be right where the couch is because we saw that part already. So let's see what else is in this image. 
And I think I'm just going to use like the wall and the floor here. So I can go like this and crop it so that I only have the part I want, which is the wall and the floor. I'm just going to duplicate it. So I'll hold down Alt and drag so that I create a copy. And then I'll just do that again until I get the whole background made. And then I'm going to group them, send it to the back, and now we have our little scene here. And I do want a shadow on the dog bed so that it doesn't look like it's floating. So I'll go up here and search for shadow, grab this. It doesn't quite look dark enough, so I'm going to duplicate it. And place that one right over the original one and maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller now we do need to include Titan so let's grab a good Titan picture maybe this one here where he's looking put him here I want him to look like he's looking at the monkey so his line of eyesight does need to go to the monkey maybe I can actually move this stuff up so that it goes with his line of sight and then I'll take my background and I'll just make it bigger. And I can just cover up this weird part down here with a shape. So I'm just going to grab a rectangle. Match the color. Now it really does look like it's catching his eye. It's right in his line of eyesight here. So let me just add a shadow from Titan. And that looks good. There is a good amount of white space here, but I'm going to wait to see if we want this scene in the bubble or the next scene in the bubble. And then we'll decide if we want to mess around with the spacing here or not. So I'm going to go to the next page and this is Titan barking and he grabs the monkey in his mouth. This one does sound a lot simpler than the other one. So I think this is probably going to be the one that's in a bubble. We want to have the monkey in Titan's mouth, which I believe we did in one of the way earlier episodes of this. So let's go all the way up. There we go. This is perfect. Here is the monkey in Titan's mouth. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing right here and bring it down and paste. And that's perfect. And I will just put this in a bubble. So I'll just pick a background color. Actually, maybe we can do the wallpaper background. That would be cute. So I'm going to grab this whole background, copy, and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to grab one of my frames. And these are the same ones that I have for sale on my website. Because since we have multiple elements that we want to frame, we can't use canvas frames, unfortunately. So I'm going to use one of my cutout frames and I'm just going to change the color of the frame to white. And we can go ahead and take this text and duplicate it because we have two sentences here. We can have the first sentence on the top and the second sentence on the bottom. I am missing a little bit of white on top there, so I'm just going to grab a rectangle, which by the way, you can just press R on your keyboard and that'll bring up a rectangle and I'll make it white. We can show our guides so that we know this isn't going outside of the safe zone. And since we have a natural break in the sentence here with the comma, I'm just going to do a line break so that this kind of reads more naturally. Oh, also, because it does say the squeak echoed in the room, we might want to put the lines that show the sound of the squeak. And I actually like that it goes outside of the frame a little bit. It's kind of neat because it just gives it a little bit of dimension. 
So I'm going to actually bring it out a little bit more like that. Now, since we know that this one's going to be in the blob, let's go back up to this page. And one thing that I like to do is that if I have text on both pages, I like them to be lined up so that you don't have like text up here on the left page and then text down here on the right page. So this text is right up against my safe zone guide. So I'm going to go to the page before it and move this text right up against the safe zone guide. That way they'll be lined up when you're looking at it. And then because we have this empty white space, I'm going to break this up into two separate sentences and I'll add line breaks after the commas here as well. And then because we have a lot of empty space, I'm going to just grab everything and just make it all bigger. Because we have a lot of space we can take up here, so why not just make everything bigger and easier to see? I think that's really cute, but one thing that's bothering me a little bit is all this empty space right here. So what we could do is maybe add like a little wall hanging, like a little decoration. Maybe we could do like a little picture with like a doggy bone in it. So it's a little picture for Titan. So let's go to picture frame. And we need to find something that matches the illustration style. So these are kind of more like photorealistic and we need something that's flat colors. I can't really find anything simple enough, so I guess I'll just make my own. So I'm just going to press R to bring up a rectangle. And then I'm going to grab this shape, and I wanna make it a little bit darker. And this is going to be the top edge of the picture frame. And then I'll just copy it and flip it to make it the bottom edge. But the bottom edge, since it's kind of facing the ceiling, it's actually going to be lighter. So I'm going to make it a light purple. And then the other two edges, I'll just leave them as is. And then I'm going to add another rectangle, which can be the background of the picture. And then I'll search for doggy bone. Change these colors a bit. I like it, but we're definitely missing something from the frame. I think it needs like an edge around it because it just looks like it's like paper thin. So I wonder if I can just grab the very bottom piece and bring it out. I think that does look a little better. Let me mess around with this background color a little bit more. Ooh, I like that color. I think that looks cute. Now we can go ahead and preview in Simple Booklet. So I'll go to Share, Simple Booklet Flip, All Pages, Save. And in case you haven't heard of Simple Booklet, it's what I like to use to preview my spreads since you can't really see pages side by side in Canva. It's free to use and basically it creates like an online book of your children's book. And it has all kinds of features, which I will make videos in the future on those. Here are the pages that we made today. I think these look really cute. What do you think? Would you have done anything differently? Let me know in the comments. Also, you can join my creativity club on Facebook where we share our projects and support and encourage each other. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.